Hi everybody, Justin here from chemistrynotes.com and today we're starting a brand new section. This is section 11. Section 11 is all about solutions. We just finished chapter 10, right? Chapter 10 was liquids, solids, and intermolecular forces. And at the very end of chapter 10 we kind of talked about uh, vapor pressure of liquids and then we're starting now to get into liquids that have solutes dissolved in them and we'll get into that those are called solutions so section 11 at the top of page one of our notes here it says solutions and their properties so today's video is going to be all about just introducing introducing different types of solution composition um, molarity molality stuff like that and then we'll do a sample problem on molarity at the end so let's get started. At the top of page one, section 11, solutions and their properties. Most substances we encounter are mixtures. Um, everyday examples include wood, gas, milk, champagne, air, steel, etc. These are all mixtures. That means they have more than one component in them. And we'll get into what the components are, are called in just a bit. So when the components are uniformly intermingled or mixed, so they're uniform throughout, there's a consistency, those are homogeneous mixtures. And we call those homogeneous mixtures solutions. So I want to introduce to you some different ways for us to measure solution composition um, from a quantitative standpoint. But qualitatively, we've always used terms like dilute or concentrated. So let's just mention that here. It says solution composition. Solutions can be dilute or concentrated, but we need to, de we need to define solution composition more precisely to do calculations. So we need to have some sort of quantitative way of deciphering what solution composition is. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, there are several methods for determining a solution's concentration. Okay? The most popular by far is molarity, and that is going to be our first one. So molarity, let me give you the equation here. Molarity equals moles of solute divided by liters of solution. If you remember, the solute is what gets dissolved. It's quite often a solid, like NaCl or sugar and the solvent is what does the dissolving, okay? So one molar is equal to one mole per liter, okay? That's very important to remember. We'll use that all throughout the rest of the course, almost on a daily basis. The rest of them are not as common, except for maybe uh, mass percent. Number two, molality. Molality is not a big M, it's a little m. So molality has a little m, and it's moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. One molal is equal to one mole per kilogram. Uh, number three, mass percent, is probably number two in popularity behind molarity. So, so number three, mass percent. Mass percent is the mass of the solute in grams divided by the mass of the solution in grams times 100%. So just important, that denominator, mass of solution, that includes solute and solvent. Number four, mole fraction. It's very similar to number three, but we don't do it in terms of mass, we do it in terms of moles. So the mole fraction is moles of solute divided by the moles of solution. In other words, the mole fraction is moles of solute divided by the moles of solvent plus solute. And that little funny looking X is the Greek symbol chi. Number five, normality. We use it sometimes with acids and bases. Normality is big N and normality is equal to the number of equivalents divided by the liters of solution. So a big N would be a normal. All right. So those are the five different types of solution composition. The, the most popular, our molarity, mass percent, and mole fraction. But at the end of this chapter, we'll use molality when we talk about freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. So they're all pretty good to know. Definitely want to know them. All right, let's finish off this short video with an example. 
it says an H2O, an H2SO4 solution is 3.75 molar and has a density of 1.230 grams per milliliter. Calculate the mass percent and the lality of the sulfuric acid. All right, so they're giving us the molarity and they're telling us, hey, the density is also 1.230 grams per milliliter. So to find mass percent, we're going to need the mass of H2SO4 solute, right? That's going to be our numerator. And then we need the mass of everything, the mass of the solution, and that'll be our denominator. So they're giving us the density of the solution, right? They're saying, hey, we got 1.230 grams of solution for every one milliliter of solution. That's the density. All right. So what we can do here is we can convert milliliters to liters, right? Us using dimensional analysis. So I got 1,000 milliliters on the top, one liter on the bottom. Now I have 1,230 grams of solution per one liter. Now, why did I do that? What made me think that I should do that? Well, they're giving me the molarity up there, right? And the molarity is 3.75 molar, that big M. But that's the same thing as 3.75 moles of H2SO4 solute per one liter of solution. So I've got the same denominator as the problem I just did. So molarity is 3.75 moles of H2SO4 per one liter of solution. Since I know the identity of the solute, H2SO4, I can use the uh, periodic table. I can add up two H's, one S, four oxygens to get the molar mass. And I convert 3.75 moles into grams down there at the bottom of the page, 368 grams of solute, 368 grams of H2SO4. So my mass percent is 368 grams of H2SO4 divided by 1,230 grams of the solution times 100%, all right? So my mass percent of H2SO4 is 29.9%, okay? Now, that is the mass percent. But if you read the problem at the top of the last page, they also wanted us to calculate molality, don't they? So for molality, remember that's moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. All right. Now we remember we have to find kilograms of solvent and we have moles of solute. So 1,230 grams of solution. If we just subtract the 368 grams of solute, that gives us 862 grams of whatever's left. And that whatever left is the solvent, water. So 1,230 minus 368 gives me 862 grams of H2O solvent. And if you use dimensional analysis, or sometimes you just know that 862 grams is equal to 0.862 kilograms of water, that's my denominator. So molality is 3.75 moles of H2SO4 divided by 0.862 kilograms of water. And that gives us 4.35 molal. I could have also said 4.35 moles per kilogram, but I like to use that little m molal. Molality is new, so we should start to use it. 4.35 molal. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about the three factors affecting the solubility of a solution and how that affects solutions. So hopefully you'll stick around for the next video. And if you like the way I make my uh, handwritten chemistry notes, I have all my journal chemistry notes and all my organic chemistry notes available at chemistrynotes.com. So stick around for the next video. We'll talk about three factors affecting the solubility of a solution.